Uh, since he's become a father, well, I mean, he's changed drastically from uh, when he first found out he was going to be a father to the point where he was actually a father, and I think it's changed him for the better. Uh, I think, you know, he, he's grown more compassionate, uh, but possibly more vengeful, I think, to those who would harm his daughter, um, which is something I think we can get behind, you know. Uh, yeah, I think he's... Season two, we've started filming, as you guys probably know, and I think in the absence of hope, he's 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 worse off. He's not a better man. He's he's a, a more violent man, certainly. Um, she gave him something to aspire to, and having that taken away from him, he. He's, he's on a downward spiral. Also, self-destructive, I kind of think of self-destructive natures. I think of him as self-destructive. I was wondering, as you as an actor, do you play him that way? Because he seems to, all the loved ones he has in his life, he always thinks that they're portraying them, and he sees betrayal where there's just, sometimes just care. So how do you kind of reconcile that when you're playing the character? I was determined to sort of root it in something from the beginning, you know, and I was given clues about his character when I first um, came onto Vampire Diaries, you know, he talked about his relationship with his parents, and so I've always based it on the idea that he is desperate for love, uh, which he never received in his childhood, and uh, because of, and for the affirmation that he so desperately wanted from his parents, and so he's always, uh, he's untrusting of, of when that care is offered to him now, because it's been taken away so many times. So I think, I, I mean, I think it's important, whoever you're playing, that you understand their motives and, you, and that you root for them. Whether, even if nobody else roots for him, I have to, because I, I have to sort of believe in, or find a way to believe in what he's doing. So for me, yeah, I, I would absolutely describe him as self-destructive as well, and that's certainly something I've, I've looked to find motive for, like why, why does he do that, why does he sabotage himself in that way? And I think, ultimately, deep down, he believes he doesn't deserve love, and, and that's why he, he takes it away from himself. I mean, you know, he, it's going to be a mixture of, of fear and rage and disbelief, I would say. You, you know, Klaus put the white oak stake in his, his dad and watched him burn up. And uh, so I don't think it's, it's going to be a happy reunion. He's, he, uh, he, it's interesting for me to play, certainly, because that's one character that... Uh, he's always been afraid of and there's you know there's a sense I think for, for anyone when they're um, chided by their parents to to regressive you know to become a child again to feel like a child so he no matter if he's stronger than his father or he's uh, you know he's equally matched it, it, I think there's still a sense of feeling like that young boy again um, uh, and I so I think he's he's gonna be it's gonna be difficult for him to deal with that but interesting for me to play because it's another side of him that, that we we haven't explored too much and we have a chance you know again in the originals to, to go further and deeper into these layers and, and see a little more about you talk about Klaus being self-destructive, but he also has that line where he said, my cruelty is self-preservation. So how self-aware do you think he actually is of his bad habits? That's a good question. You know, sometimes I think he's, he's very aware. Um, sometimes he speaks in, in a way where you believe he, well, he's really insightful. He understands exactly what he's doing, and yet he's still doing it, you know? Um, but sometimes I think there's the red mist. He just sees red and he, he, he you know, everything clouds over and he wakes up and there's a pile of bodies around him. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it varies. I think on his good days, he's, he's very aware and even able to catch himself. Um, 
but he has a bestial side, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's half werewolf, and I think that is the side that gets in the way of that, that's the emotionally turbulent side that uh, will stop him from analysing himself to the point where he can help himself. Have you been playing for a long time now? Just, you know, like just uh, a, a lot of it was sort of hinted at in, in the Vampire Diaries and then we were able to really explore further. One thing I, I love doing is the flashbacks because we get to, you know, one of the things I, I guess you, you, you try and do when you play a role is, is develop the backstory, is work out what, you know, where, okay, what has this guy been through to make him who he is today and we get to play that and, and the more, and it's like pieces of the puzzle, you know, so you hope by the end maybe you could put it all into chronological order and, and go, oh, I get him now, now I understand, he's not so bad, he's alright, he's just been through some stuff, you know, um, but so for me, I, I think definitely putting those pieces in has been great and, and doing the originals means that we can, you know, the flashbacks are focused on the family normally, so that's, um, that's been hugely informative for me and, and enjoyable to play as well, you know, and it, dressing up, you know, it's fun. With Gillies, it's great. I mean, he's one of the main reasons I wanted to do the show. You know, he and I did our first, my first episode t together. All of my scenes were with him until the the end. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. He's brilliant. You know. Uh, <laughs> I love it. No. At the end of season two, um, you know, people talk about the originals being the story of his redemption, possibly, or potentially being the story of Klaus's redemption. And I like the idea of that. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen by the end of season two. Uh, but you know, ultimately, I'd like to see Klaus redeem himself, and possibly, possibly die in the process. I think that would be a nice twist on it. And I, you know, I said to Julie and, and Mike Narducci, you know, our, our producers, writers, uh, whatever happens with the show, I want us to have an end. You, you know, whenever that end is, not just sort of trail off. I feel like it, it, it would be great to have this complete s story from beginning to end where we follow these characters. And, and, and so for me, uh, that's the important thing. But at the end of season two, who knows? <laughs> Your guess is as good as I I mean, I, kn I know something. With the writers we have and the directors we have, he'll be in a different place to where he is now. They 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 know how to create an arc and a journey and to put through something. So for me, it's just you know I I I'm just enjoying the ride.